everybody, it's Baker, and I got a Twixter tutorial, and uh, I'm just going to say right up, uh, it's not that exciting, yeah. Um, basically, uh, I'm going to go a little bit through the ins and outs of Twixter and uh, a couple tips here and there. But um, <clears throat> basically, I want to have a clip, let's see, I'll just make a new comp real quick. And let's make this, I don't know long enough and then you have this clip right and the higher the frame weight frame rate obviously the better uh, twixter you'll get in slow motion um, 59.94 would be the best but this is just 29.97 and you also want to find a spot that does not have a lot of movement so like the spinning part right here you're not gonna want to twixter that probably like after he shoots it's relatively uh, not a lot of movement so um, apply Twixter or Twixter Pro doesn't matter um, so all we're looking at is the output control speed for right now so let's go right before he hits it all right about there and set a keyframe for the speed and let's press U to look at it and then let's go over a few frames or so and then slow this down to, I don't know, 10%. And that's basically it. Now, <coughs> hold on. Now you'll notice, because it slows down, you don't get to see the rest of the clip because, you know, it's short. And then, like, most people will say, oh, just fix it with time, time remapping, and then just drag it out. Well, I think that's kind of weird because... You got like a time function on top of a time function, and I just think it'll get really messy. So the easiest way I know to fix it is take your clip and pre-compose it. And let's uh, leave all the attributes, and we'll just call this clip. Okay. I go into this comp and extend the comp to pretty large. It doesn't really matter. Just you want the comp to be longer than the clip. So we go go. When we go back, we have this entire comp to work with, and it stays slow motion throughout the whole clip. So that's a neat little tip that I don't know a lot of you know, but yeah, go ahead and pre-comp it before you use Twixter. <clears throat> Make sure it's longer than the clip, and um, you know, obviously it's not the best. You see some warping here because it's uh, 27.97 not the best. I mean, you could uh, add a little bit of motion blur compensation, like one or so. I don't know. You just gotta mess around to get the best. But um, uh, let's go over some stinking a little bit. Now this. Oh, let me also let, show you. Wait for. Let me turn the speakers. Twixter does not preserve the audio and like stretch it with the uh, the video. So the audio does not change at all, and I'll show you. If you can kind of listen for a second. Uh, let's see. Listen carefully. You can hear him reloading and knifing at the end, and it doesn't go with that. But um, I also want to show you. There's. Uh, let's see. What you can do is let me just duplicate this clip and delete all these keyframes and let's turn off that one second you guys okay so we apply Twixter again now instead of output speed we can actually set it to frame number which is exactly like the time remap because if we look it's set by the time and if we hold Command or Control and click on the time right here. You set these to frame numbers, so that's how these keyframes are marked. And we can. Um, I was hoping you can just you know uh, copy and paste all these keyframes because they have a. Uh, they're marked by numbers. Stopwatch the keyframe number. Click on it and paste those keyframes, but it doesn't doesn't really work so what you can do is this is kinda tricky but you have to basically copy every keyframe that you did in time remap 
by hand. So you have to do this whole process earlier if you want to sync with Twixter. So go ahead and start with zero, just like this, keyframe. Push this arrow and it'll snap to the next keyframe and just copy this value, 66. Move over, snap, 75. Move over, snap, 83. Now, yeah, it'll, it'll take a while if you have a long clip like this, but like I said earlier, uh, you probably don't need this many. Um, let's see. Yeah, if if you want to sync with Twix <coughs> Twixter, go ahead and use the time remap to kind of, you know, get it how you want to look first, and then go ahead and, you know, apply Twixter, and you have to do this by hand. And one other thing that makes this kind of useful is if we turn off the visual for the bottom layer, turn it off, and then turn off the audio for the top with the Twixter, the audio from the time remap, which is actually um, affected by the time remap, will go on to the Twixtered video and will actually sync the music. So let's see if this will work. So we get the Twixter and it's uh, going to be, you know, timing up with the kills. And the audio from the time remap will now line up. And so, it's basically like the time remap, except you're just going to have that Twixter slow mo on some of the parts. And uh, that can actually help you a lot if you're going to do any kind of syncing. Um, I uh, don't know what else to say. Let's see here. Um, yeah, so again, just use your time remap to kind of set it up, get it how you want, and then just kind of move it over to Twixter, if you know what I mean. And uh, that's about it. And then for single clips, again, just pre comp them. So then you have a whole thing to work with. Oh, <coughs> and one thing if you have a high frame rate frame rate clip. I don't know why I keep saying that, but um, and you have your composition to fifty nine point nine seven or nine four. Make sure your input frame rate is the same thing fifty nine point nine four, and that will make it even smoother. And but the thing is, when you render it. And you go to best settings, I think. Yeah. It says use this comp frame rate, 59.94. When you upload it to YouTube, it actually condenses it. And so it's you're basically rendering twice as many frames for no reason. So you want to use this frame rate and type in 29.97. That's the frame rate that YouTube uses. So that will decrease your uh, your file size by half. So I mean, you can go ahead and do that if you want, but it's not going to show up on YouTube. And I think that's about it. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. Uh, next tutorial will be on either on shortcuts or I'll go over some more audio stuff with uh, any audio editing. I think it will be pretty interesting. I don't know if a lot of people have done that, but yeah, that's about it. Thanks, guys. Uh, peace.